One of the hardest things for white people and Asian people and young people, old people, gay people, straight people, kitties, puppies, turtles, goldfish, one of the hardest things for all those groups of people to get their mind around is that black people are not really into you. They're not really into us. They don't like us that much. The reason, one of the reasons it's so hard to get our mind around that is because the rest of us are out here constantly looking inside of ourselves. We're searching for that one little tiny spark of racism. And we're trying to stomp it out. And while we're trying to stomp out this last spark of racism, every day, every day, TV, radio, newspapers, the web, on the streets, we see black on white hostility going mainstream acknowledged, encouraged, said to be just a normal thing because everybody knows how much white people suck. So why shouldn't we not like them? And as for Asian people, they're always out there working and making money, making black people look bad. We really hate them. Let's head on up to the latest example of this we have from beautiful West Philadelphia. Now, I'm not sure, but I think this what you're going to see is kind of a mixture of Nextdoor.com, and there might be a few Reddit comments in here throw, in, thrown, thrown in here as well. But listen to this robbery, then listen to the people's reaction to the robbery. From West Philadelphia, two kids robbed me and a friend at gunpoint at Farragut and Walnut. I think I was up there a couple weeks ago, by the way, at the haunted house. Back to the letter. Come from behind. They, they came from behind, asking for directions to 46th and Market, directions we were headed, and then proceeded to follow us for half a block before running and pulling out a Glock. They seemed just as scared, nervous as we were, whatever that's worth. They were about 20 years old, wearing hoodies, black males, no facial hair, five foot eight, filed a police report already, and all that. I don't know. Just watch your back. Y a l l y'all. Okay, if you, anybody lurks or posts on next door, or especially next door, this is a pretty standard thing to do. I mean, you know, something happens in your yard, you tell people what happened. But but it's also standard if you say, instead of saying like there were a group, this just happened in my neighborhood. Instead of just saying there were a group of teenagers up on my up on my front porch, if you say there were and they were doing all sorts of all sorts of bad things, if you say there was a group of black teenagers then all the black neighbors are going to come in and go, why'd you have to make it about race? Well, black people are the only one doing that stuff in this neighborhood. Is that right? No, white people do it all the time. Oh, really? Where? Well, we'll get back to you on that, Colin. Anyway, let's listen to the reaction to these stories, to this story from black and white people, social justice warriors all, and kind of hard to believe. Here's one. Great job making it just a little easier for the pigs to murder innocent black kids in hoodies. I'm glad you're okay, to be clear, but I don't know what filing a police report is going to do besides give them another excuse to stop random black men. And then somebody asked the guy, well, what would you you do in that situation? But the guy says, take the eye. That must be in a subway. Take the eye and fucking move if you're scared. L-O-L. That's something we hear a lot on this page about people being scared. We are not scared. We are aware. We are not scared of these thugs. We're aware so we can act if we ever in a position where we have to act. Why don't we go to this person? Jesus The lack of awareness of the implications of potentially sending two black kids to their deaths is astounding. We can be bummed this happened, but also be critical how we automatically respond to crime. And he puts up a little meme that says, the whites are at it again. So, let me get, I know, you didn't read that wrong. You read it right. You heard it right. Calling the police on two black people who robbed two other people who I think are white, calling the police 
means you are unaware of the implications of sending two black kids to their death. Man, if that is not a clear statement about crime is the new black entitlement, I just have never heard anything clearer than that. Do you get it now? Are you getting it? They're just not into you. They're not into you. They're not into you on a level you cannot even imagine. You're worrying about whether, you know, you open the door or, or polite to that black person in the drugstore the other day. Oh, my God. You're living on another planet for people who look at you and say, hey, it's OK if you get killed. But damn it, we, nobody better report that because, you know, that's going to make black people look bad. That's the world you're living in right now in the United States of America. Capiche? Wow. Here's another comment. Watch the cops find a reason to kill two black kids with facial hair anyway and then claim they fit the description or they were scared. Here's another comment from one of the geniuses out in West Philadelphia. Boy, both y'all don't know shit about the streets. Both y'all look fadable and muggable. Wow. How many times have we talked here about what just happened there? The two fellas came up to those two white guys on the street and they asked them a question. Hey, do you know where 46th and Market Street is? They know where 46th and Market Street is. What they didn't know is how easy you were going to be to rob. Were you going to put up a fight? Did you have any money? Was it going to be easy to get it from you? Hmm, do you think they were carrying a gun? That's what they wanted to know. You gave the wrong answer. Whatever the correct answer was, you didn't give it because you got robbed. God, now I'm starting to sound like the other the, the fellas on these pages who are mocking and scorning the victims. But you know, and that but in that, you know, in that posting, there was a little bit of uh there was a little bit of apology for kind of noticing some bad business in the old hood. Did you kind of catch that? Okay, so here's another one from a white guy. There's a little bit of talking here about lockout cards. I don't even know what that is. But then he's he's encouraging those two people to take the L, take the take the subway. If they got a few bucks, that's sort of on whites. Me, the guy is talking here is a white. That's sort of on me to acknowledge our failures to bring about reparations. And the dudes were just taking the bread. Because we didn't give it. I take an aggressively zemeological approach to criminal justice so that I totally understand. I really hope this never happens again. I also hope that this is a learning opportunity, though. Maybe some time to volunteer? So sorry that happened to you. It's not good. No, you can't have it both ways. Can't go around telling people, sorry you got robbed. Now it's a, this, is a, this is a learning opportunity for you to go do some volunteer with the fellas and the lovely ladies to learn about why you got robbed and why you shouldn't have even have to been robbed. You should have just given them the money. Good Lord, how do these how do these stupid people stay alive for one day at a time? I don't even recognize that. The stuff, ha that sucks what happened to you in filing report for insurance stuff. I understand that. But posting here like you did is just putting more targets on black men and telling white people to be needlessly scared. We're not scared of you, fool. We are aware of this enormous black-on-white hostility. It's literally a white person posting about two black men, or possibly boys, without a real description. It stokes fear. It adds to the scary black man trope. It's not a trope. It, it, it's something that is real in that neighborhood for the white people who decide, for whatever reason, they have to move into West Philadelphia because they're down with the cause. The cause is going to be down with them. Uh, it, it's just worth noting what happens to those people. Here we go. Here's a good one. 
I want you all to understand how this affects me. The robbers have not been caught. I'm very large and black and live a block away from where it took place. I wear all black all the time. I fit the description. I'm worried because the cops will stop and question me. It happened already last week for a similar crime in the area. I am afraid for my life. Fuck the police. Fuck this white liberal nonsense. Fuck y'all. I'm at risk of dying now. Fighting back against crime puts innocent black people in danger of losing their lives. Do you get that? Do you get how screwed up that is? Oh, it gets more screwed up all over the country. This level of black on white hostility, it hasn't bottomed out yet. People are just kind of mining the bottom and they keep finding new ways to go lower and lower and lower. Out in Davis, California, it was, this was a white guy. A white guy kills a new cop, a 22-year-old cop. Her, her name was like Natalie Corona or something like that. Natalie Corona up in Davis. Now, if you've ever been to Davis, you know Davis. It's, it's, a, it's a college town. UC Davis, that town is most famously for. It has the highest like concentration of bikes in the world or something like that. So, you know, you got your social justice warriors hanging out at Davis. So this woman gets... Uh, shot, killed Natalie Corona. She was a Davis police officer. And all these groups surrounding Davis in Sacramento and on the campus, they started criticizing this woman because she was taking a picture with a flag, a flag of the Blue Lives Matter movement. We use their stuff here a lot. And, uh, they called, they called the picture of their Blue Lives Matter. They said it was, uh, repackaged Nazi propaganda. The pictures of this woman, this dead cop, they were calling that repackaged Nazi propaganda. And said, well, instead of, uh, they said, instead of, you know, focusing on this cop who was shot in the line of duty, we should, we should start thinking about Daryl Richards, who was, uh, Brandishing a pellet gun, he got shot by the cops for no reason whatsoever. At UC Davis, the another student group, a student group at UC Davis called the University's Ethnic and Cultural Affairs Commission, criticized the picture with the uh, cop with a flag, saying it was triggering, blatantly anti-black. They put this on Facebook. They said flashing lights, sirens, and increased police presence can be triggering to many black and brown people. This, this flag represents an attempt by law enforcement to undermine the Black Lives Matter movement. It's an, eva- it's an effort to evade account- accountability and critical awareness of police treatment of communities of color. Wow. Think about the dr- hostility that has to be filling you so right up to the brim where it just spills out when a 22-year-old cop is killed. You can't even hold it in. You have to say, oh, yeah, that cop was just, a, you know, her, 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 her obituaries are just another piece of Nazi propaganda meant to, meant, meant to keep black people down. Think about how full of hate those people are we just heard. Think about how that affects you. Do you think these, that's isolated? Think about that, how that affects you. Your mom and your dad, if they're living somewhere like that children if they're going to a school like the University of Southern California, Columbia, uh, Madison, University of Wisconsin and Madison. Lots and lots of schools, lots of fellas just patrolling on the outside waiting for that one little lost sheep to leave the flock. Please sir, I want some more. Temple University right near, not too far from where this, this other first story took place. They have the largest police force of any college in the world. I wonder why that is. I know why it is. Lots of people know why it is. Nobody will say it because they just do not want to make the black kids angry. 